drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi everyone welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered by edupedia world previous lecture i started discussing about the different heat treatment processes i introduced you to the heat treatment process known as stress un annealing uh, rather stress relieving today we will be discussing about the different annealing processes will i will give you an introductory lecture today and in the upcoming lectures we will discuss about each of the annealing processes separately so to begin with the annealing process is basically a three step process okay in which the first step is heating the specimen to a predetermined temperature we will discuss how do we determine the temperature uh, but uh, now just to show you what is exactly happening this is time axis this is temperature axis and with time we first heat it to a given temperature at a determined heating rate then we hold the specimen at that temperature for a certain amount of time which is decided beforehand and then in the annealing process as i said beforehand that we cool it very very slowly more often than not we cool it within the furnace itself so we cool it quite slowly to bring it back to room temperature so this is the annealing cycle or the steps involved in annealing now this temperature the final temperature which we obtained at which we are carrying out the annealing how do we decide that the decision what will be the temperature is taken after considering the composition of the material and what is the final property that we require so these are the factors which are taken into account while deciding whether this temperature should be 700 degree celsius 800 degree celsius 500 degree celsius or whatever the composition and the desired property will dictate the temperature as well as the time of hold fine now what is the purpose of annealing as we saw in stress relieving we basically want to get rid of internal stresses what is it that annealing offers us annealing also offer offers relieving of internal stresses okay but in addition to that it improves the ductility and toughness of the body fine it can help in grain refinement refining of grains it can help so basically these are things which can be attained by annealing it does not mean all the annealing process will give you all the uh, require all the points which i have shown here different annealing process under different uh, schedules might give a different response altogether okay and finally this improved ductility and removal of internal stresses kind of improves the machinability of the material at hand so annealing can be used to remove internal stress improve ductility and toughness refine grains enhance machinability now the different kind of annealing processes that are there can be divided depending on different parameters first depending on what is the temperature at which annealing is being carried out based on that we can have either full annealing partial annealing or subcritical annealing let me show you what each of them mean full annealing is basically where you heat the body to a temperature above the upper critical temperature this is upper critical temperature now you might wonder what exactly is the upper critical temperature if you remember the iron carbon phase diagram near the eutectoid region if this was 727 which was the a1 line 
this was A3 and this was ACM then this region anything above A3 for hyper eutectoid and anything above ACM for hyper eutectoid is upper critical temperature so basically this line is the upper critical temperature A3 and ACM combined is the upper critical temperature therefore what is happening is in the case of annealing full annealing what we are doing is that we are taking the body above the upper critical temperature above either A3 or ACM depending on whether it is hypo eutectoid or hyper eutectoid in case of eutectoid obviously we will take it above A1 so it will be somewhere over here now in the case of partial annealing on the other hand we take the body into the two phase region we take it between the lower critical temperature that is the A1 line and the upper critical temperature that is the A3 ACM line combined okay so we are over this region either here or here this is where partial annealing takes place fine now subcritical annealing is when we heat the body and hold it below the lower critical temperature that is we are below A1 line below 727 degrees Celsius thereby these three processes cover all the temperature range full anneal above the upper critical subcritical annealing below the lower critical and partial annealing between upper critical and lower critical temperature okay now annealing can also be categorized based on what is the purpose of annealing based on the purpose of annealing we can either have diffusion annealing we can have process annealing or we can have recrystallization annealing what is each of them briefly speaking diffusion annealing is basically carried out in order to homogenize the whole specimen during uh, casting of ingots what happens is there is ununiformity uh, in composition or in grain structure and diffusion annealing basically homogenizes the whole chunk of specimen right then process annealing is basically a annealing process which is a intermediate process taking place between let's say multiple roll rolling passes so this basically brings back the ductility for further mechanical processing on the body this restores the ductility therefore it is part of the whole process thereby process annealing recrystallization annealing on the other hand is the annealing which is happening during the recovery recrystallization grain growth which we studied before so recrystallization annealing is basically growth of fresh gro grains out of highly strained old grains that is what recrystallization annealing is okay now let us see all this in the iron carbon phase diagram just to have a better idea where what is happening okay as I said diffusion annealing is basically homogenization so you need to have a lot of diffusion and homogenization to occur the whole bulk should be in a single phase therefore we take it to the austenitic phase region and to a very high temperature thereby diffusion is supported or enhanced and we have homogenization okay recrystallization annealing on the other hand is at quite low temperature we do not have any phase transformation for recrystallization annealing we just have new grains coming up from old strain grains process annealing is also below the lower critical temperature that is there is no phase change taking place basically here also what we do is we, we try to improve the ductility so that further forming or machining processes can be carried out okay these three are extremes in between we have the full anneal over here full anneal 
which is above the A3 line. We will discuss later that full annealing is normally always only done for the hypoeutectoid steel. It is not done for hyperutectoid steel. We will understand why that is the case later on. Then we have partial annealing over here which is between ACM and A1 line. Partial annealing is normally not done in case of hypoeutectoid. It is normally done in case of hyperutectoid. We will discuss this in details. And uh, I have not shown here the subcritical annealing, but subcritical annealing would take some somewhere over here below the A1 temperature. Okay, so this lecture I introduced you to the concept of annealing. What are the advantages of annealing? We saw some different categorization of annealing, and this diagram kind of helps you visualize where exactly what kind of annealing is going to take place in which temperature range. From next lecture onwards, we will discuss each of the annealing process in details. So till next class, have a great day. Goodbye.